Hello, I'm Professor John Kelly and this is the Weber Auto YouTube channel. It has been several months since I have posted a video on YouTube and I apologize for that. <laughs> I've been very busy uh, developing curriculum for the hybrid and electric vehicle uh, classes that I teach online to just anyone that wants to sign up and the teaching the five-day boot camps. Uh, I, I had to develop a lot of curriculum for that. But now I'm finally getting caught up and am ready to get back to uh, shooting videos. And so th right behind me, our topic today is the Ford Mustang Mach-E. And we ordered, and it took seven months to get, a 2021 Mach-E GT with the extended range uh, battery all-wheel drive. And... I've spent a lot of time uh, researching and playing with this vehicle and today I want to show you the common components that you will find on just about any electric vehicle. And we've looked at these on the Chevrolet Bolt EV, we're gonna, going to look at them here on the Mustang. Okay, so let's start under the front trunk area, the frunk as it's called, and take a look at what components are in there. So as I mentioned, there are these 10 common components that you will find on just about every battery electric vehicle. And the first one I want to look at under the front lid here, the front trunk lid, is the inverter for the front electric motor. Now the inverter for the Mustang Mach-E GT is remotely mounted under the front trunk area here. Um, and it's this part right here. And as you can see, it has a couple of cooling hoses connected to it, one going in, one, one coming out, uh, to keep it cool. It is remotely mounted compared to just the regular all-wheel drive Mustang Mach-E, uh, where the inverter is mounted right to the front drive unit electric motor itself. So the performance version, the GT version here, the, the front electric motor, the drive unit is larger, it's more powerful than the standard all-wheel drive one. And because of that, apparently, there was no room for the inverter to be mounted on top of the motor, and so it is remotely mounted. Uh, the rear motor that we'll look at uh, here in a little bit has the inverter mounted with it, and the rear motor is the same whether you get the performance version of the vehicle or just the standard version or even just the rear-wheel drive. A version. So the inverter here under the, the frunk uh, uses DC voltage from our high voltage battery underneath the vehicle and converts it to a three phase voltage to drive our permanent magnet synchronous motor in the front here. And there's one very similar uh, in the rear. Okay, our next high voltage component, common component that you have on every vehicle is this part uh, right next to the front inverter on the passenger side called the DC to DC converter. And it is connected to the high voltage battery under the vehicle also, but it steps that voltage down to around 12 to 15 volts, depending on the needs of the vehicle, to charge the 12 volt battery that is also here underneath the front trunk. You can see the output from the DC to DC converter to the high voltage battery positive is that red wire with the white stripe. And that goes right over to the, the 12 volt battery. That is our 12 volt output or 14 volt output um, from the DC to DC converter to keep that battery alive. And as we found out in, in our uh, experiments, provides the power for the, the rest of the vehicle and the battery, the 12 volt battery does not. The, the 12 volt battery is pretty much just there to let the car turn on and for emergencies. But once the car is turned on, you've got that ready light on, then the DC to DC converter powers the rest of the 12 volt system on the car. Because this is, the rest of the car is a 12 volt system, just like any battery electric vehicle. Although the 12 volt battery is not a high voltage component, it is used to turn on the high voltage system. So that DC to DC converter we just looked at is essential in keeping this 12 volt battery charged so that when the high voltage system is off, we have some power available to turn it back on 
and we turn on the contactors that uh, there's a recall because under certain circumstances some of those contactors uh, weld themselves shut. It'll be interesting to see uh, what they do to fix that. But that's actually a pr pretty rare situation uh, to have happen. But if this 12 volt battery goes dead, then here under the hood there are jump start terminals. So we don't put jumper cables on the battery itself uh, because there's a risk of a spark that could cause fire or explosion. But we've got a negative jump start terminal right here and a positive jump start terminal right here under this red cap. So you just lift this red cap up and we have our 12 volt battery positive connection right there. Now of course this is all covered with plastic panels and you've got your, your front storage area here you've got to lift off or pull off the plastic panels to get to it. And you might be wondering, well, how do I even open the front trunk, which is electrically open, uh, if the 12 volt battery is dead? Uh, there is a little panel on the front of the vehicle uh, that allows you to connect a jumper box to open the front trunk. And then once the front trunk opens, then you can get in here and put a jump start box on these jump start terminals. And if you have the key fob with you, then you can open the door and hit the power button and have the car turn on. While we are here under the front trunk, there's this green electrical connector. And this green electrical connector is called the low voltage service disconnect, the LVSD. And in a future video coming up shortly, this low voltage service disconnect is used to disable the high voltage system or attempt to disable the high voltage system uh, as we'll discuss uh, in that video. But this is not a high voltage connector. This is somewhere where an emergency responder could get to and with a, using the proper procedures at the proper time, uh, disconnect this and disable the high voltage system because it actually is the power for the contactors themselves. Also right here underneath the hood, we have the low voltage fuse box. There's, there's two fuse boxes here. There's a low voltage, low current fuse box right here on top. And if you open that up, there's an electrical connector in there that kills power to the entire vehicle and you, everything will be dead. You, you, you can't, <laughs> you can't turn the car on, there's no lights, there's, there's nothing. Um, and then underneath that is the low voltage high current fuse box that is there for the higher current low voltage systems like power steering and, and so on. So don't open that fuse box. If you do, um, you're going to disable the, the whole system and set a whole bunch of trouble codes. Uh, somebody trained needs to be able to get in there and disconnect it or open it and then close it properly so that all the connections line back up and the car powers back up. All right, so we've got our inverter that we've talked about, our DC to DC converter that charges our 12 volt battery right here. If that battery goes dead, we have jump start terminals. We also have our low voltage service disconnect uh, connector here and uh, under hood fuse box. Uh, with with low current fuses and high current fuses. All right, let's take a look at some other high voltage components that are here. Okay, under the front trunk, you can see an orange connector right here. That orange connector goes to, and it's kind of hidden, the electric air conditioning compressor. And that runs on high voltage. It's a variable speed uh, compressor that is used for the air conditioning system inside the vehicle. It is also used in conjunction with what's called the chiller. The chiller is this part right here. And the chiller, as you can see, has coolant lines connected to it. And that would have coolant that needs to be, needs to have the heat removed from it or cooled down. Uh, the air conditioning system has high pressure and low pressure lines that connect to it and transfer the heat from the coolant into the refrigerant and then out front to the uh, condenser where it's, it's uh, blown out into the air. So a heat transfer for cooling the coolant for the high voltage battery and the electronics, power elect electronics as necessary. 
Okay, another high voltage component that is here under the front trunk that all battery electric vehicles and plug-in hybrid vehicles have is the onboard charger module. So you can see a label down there uh, that reads 10.5 kilowatt onboard charger module and it runs the full length underneath the DC to DC converter and the uh, front motor inverter. It's, it's a pretty large module there and that part is never used while you drive. It's only used when you stop your vehicle and plug in the, a charge cord to the side of your vehicle. So it's used when you plug in an AC level 1 or an AC level 2 charge cord because it needs to convert AC voltage uh, at either 120 volts or 240 approximately uh, up to a high enough voltage to charge the battery. And this battery gets up to around 385 volts, um, if I remember correctly. So it has to step up the voltage uh, from your wall uh, charge charge cord and then because it steps up the voltage it steps down the current and takes takes a while to charge the the battery when you go to a dc fast charge station like that like an electrify america uh, station the onboard charge module is not used it's bypassed and there the dc power from your dc fast charge station uh, bypasses the onboard charger module and is fed directly to the battery on a different electrical connector than the one used for AC voltage and it also uses a separate set of contactors. So there's a separate set of contactors just for DC fast charging. There's a separate set of contactors for turning the vehicle on uh, and, and providing high voltage to all of these high voltage components uh, here under the, the front trunk and there's another one in the rear that we're going to look at here momentarily. Okay, while we are here under the front trunk, you can see there are two coolant reservoirs or expansion tanks, as Ford calls them. The one in the rear is for the high voltage battery system. Uh, the one on the side, the right front, is for the motor electronics systems. So all of the high voltage components here underneath the front trunk and the drive unit and inverter in the rear are cooled with the motor electronics expansion tank here on the passenger side under the front trunk. The battery uh, is cooled with the expansion tank at the rear of the front trunk area. Now there is also uh, a heater core and a heater coolant loop involved in this, but there's only two reservoirs. So unlike the Chevrolet Bolt EV where there were three reservoirs, the, th the third reservoir on the Volt was just for the passenger compartment heating. This one does not use that third reservoir. Instead, the motor electronics reservoir over there on the passenger side feeds both the heater coolant loop and the motor electronics coolant loop. And down in the bottom of this front trunk area with the storage compartment removed is a four-way switching valve. Now, you can see under the front trunk here, there's a lot of coolant hoses here, and I've heard comments of, oh my word, there's so many coolant hoses under there. This system doesn't really have much more coolant hoses on it than any other vehicle. It actually has a few more hoses, but only because of something I think is really smart, and that is we, use, we can use heat from the inverters, the waste heat from the inverters, both front and rear inverters and both front and rear drive units, and all the power electronics that are here, the DC to DC converter, use the heat, the waste heat generated by that and route it into the passenger compartment through that four-way valve in the bottom of the housing here. Let's put the vehicle up in the air and we'll take a look at the front drive unit, the rear drive unit, and the high voltage battery. Okay, as you can see under the vehicle here, we've got it lifted on the hoist. Uh, we've already removed all the undercar plastic uh, panels for aerodynamics and we have exposed all of the uh, high voltage components that we can see all, along with others that are normally covered and protected as you drive down the road. You're not going to have stuff splashing up and, and hitting these things. They are somewhat protected. So right here is the, our front drive unit, the electric motor and gear reduction unit. I actually have uh, some that were donated to us from Borg Warner 
over here on the workbench and we'll take a look at those in a, in a future video for the Mustang uh, Mach-E GT. I have both the rear motor and the front high performance motor uh, that we'll take a look at in, in great detail. But for now, we've got our, our drive unit right here with the remote mounted inverter that we saw under the front trunk. Uh, you can see right back here, some of the orange electrical connectors on the front of our high voltage battery. Uh, and of course our battery is the, the main high voltage component, uh, the, the common component that we have on all of these vehicles. Okay, we can see the, the high voltage battery uh, begins right here and goes clear to the back of the vehicle, right back to our, our rear drive unit. So it's a, it's a rather large battery. This one has a label that reads 98.8 kilowatt hours but that is not necessarily what Ford has made available to you for various reasons. Most electric vehicle manufacturers don't give you 100% of your battery capacity. They keep some in reserve. All right, as far as electrical connectors, we have four of them going across right here. This small electrical connector on the passenger side is where the DC power is applied to the battery from our onboard charger module when you plug in the charge cord to the side of the vehicle. It's converted to or from AC power to DC. And then as we discussed, the voltage is stepped up, the current goes down, and it comes in on this little electrical connector right here. This great big orange electrical connector is your DC fast charge electrical connector. So when you plug in a DC fast charge cable, like at a Electrify America a DC fast charge station, it comes in on these great big wires instead of these little tiny ones uh, that we just talked about. So both of these connectors are for charging. That's pretty typical. The Chevrolet Bolt EV has a separate uh, low current charge connector and the high current charge connector. Uh, this one also has this silver colored metal connector right here and that is the DC output to the inverter and then we have a, a small low voltage connection over here notice it's not orange the wires are not orange and that is for data communication power and ground and so on to the battery energy control module inside of the battery so the uh, contactors that there was a recall for are inside the battery just right here. All of these electrical connectors here are connected through contactors to the actual high voltage battery inside there. And like I said, I'll take this battery out and take the cover off and show you the contactors um, a little bit later in, a, in another video. There are also, while we are here, two coolant hose connections right over here. We have an inlet and an outlet. Here's our inlet, there's the outlet for keeping the battery cool uh, or warming the battery as, as necessary. Uh, there is a coolant heater and that coolant heater is another high voltage component that a lot of vehicles have uh, as a common component and it's buried up inside of here. It, it's hard to see it, but it is there and that is another high voltage common component. Okay, here we are underneath the rear of our Mustang Mach-E GT, and this is the rear drive unit, the large drive unit. It has its own inverter bolted to the top of it. We can't see it from, from in here. Right here on the back of the high voltage battery is the power feed for the rear inverter and, and drive unit. It's just a, a DC connection right over and up to the inverter itself. There are no other electrical connectors here on the rear of the battery. However, there are two coolant hose uh, connections at the rear of the battery, and that's because those coolant hoses also connect at the front. So there's actually four coolant hose connections at the front of the battery. Two of them are for cooling the actual battery itself. The other two are connected to long plastic nylon pipes that run alongside of the battery and then come back and they are for cooling our drive unit 
uh, cooling the tr the transmission fluid in the drive unit, the Mercon ULV, ultra low viscosity fluid, which is used in both the front and the rear uh, drive units here. Uh, these drive units do have drain plugs and fill plugs and look in the maintenance guide for the type of driving that you do and when uh, it is necessary to have maintenance done. Uh, one more thing while we are here underneath the vehicle. I told you I'm going to remove the battery in a, f in a future video and I've already had the battery out many times and back in. But to remove the battery on this vehicle it's a tremendous amount of work um, compared to vehicles like the Nissan Leaf and the, and the Chevrolet Bolt EV. This is much more time consuming and it requires special adapters to be able to even lift the vehicle because the normal lift points are on the battery housing uh, frame rails on the side of, on the edges of the battery. So let's, let's take a look at what I'm talking about here. Okay, to be able to remove the high voltage battery on this vehicle, which I'm going to do, as I've mentioned several times in another video coming up, you have to lift it using some special adapters so that you can actually remove the battery because the lift points for the vehicle are normally right here on this black metal uh, frame rail here that's part of the high voltage battery housing. So in other words, we're lifting the vehicle by the edges of the battery housing support and you can't lower the battery out of the vehicle if you're lifting it by the battery. So there are some special adapters. You have to remove the big long plastic rocker panels uh, along each side of the vehicle and there's an antenna I had to uh, remove for the key fob that it is normally uh, here by the driver's door and the, and the passenger door. But once you get that, get those rocker panels off, then there are these big steel uh, adapter plates that you put up into some slots and bolt in place. And then you take your, your lift arm for the hoist and you put it right up against this lip right here of the tool which means there, there's only maybe a fourth to a third of my lift pad lifting on that adapter. And it's very unnerving. It's, it's very frightening at first um, to do it. But uh, I've got the, the hoist arms locked. They, they can't swing one way or the other. Uh, I really don't like the way it, this tool works, but uh, it works fine. We've had, I don't know how many times we've had this battery in and out, probably seven or eight times now um, and the, the vehicle stays nice and rigid but anyway there's these special tools that you need to lift the vehicle to prevent damaging uh, the vehicle while you're lifting it so that you can undo the bolts and remove the high voltage battery so I wanted to show you the the adapters and how unnerving almost frightening it is uh, to use that but Removing this battery is, is a lot of work because we have six coolant connectors. We have a whole bunch of bolts down each side. Uh, there are eight uh, studs with nuts on them in the back. We have an electrical connector in the rear. We have four electrical connectors in the front. And then it's a great big battery. Uh, so your lift table has got to have a pretty big top and you got to find the center of gravity uh, so that it's nice and balanced as you lower the the battery down. All right, well, I'm getting off on a tangent there. Uh, the main goal of this video was to look at the high voltage components that are common from one battery powered electric vehicle to another. And we've taken a look at all of them except for the, pl the plug-in uh, charge receptacle on the side of the vehicle. And, and here's a photograph of it uh, for you to look at. So we've seen all 10 high voltage uh, common components. And those co components are the high voltage battery, the two inverters for the, the uh, motors that drive this vehicle, our DC to DC converter. Uh, we have our drive units, the front and rear drive units, the electric motors. We have our onboard charger module to convert AC power to DC when you plug in your charge cable. Uh, we have what's called a junction box on many other vehicles 
On this vehicle, it doesn't use a junction box. It uses electrical connectors that have two wires coming in to feed power to that part, and then two more wires going out to feed power to the next part instead. Uh, we've got the charge receptacle. We have some sort of a coolant heater for the battery. And then uh, some vehicles have a separate uh, heater for heating the passenger compartment. This only has one heater and then it shares heat through that switching valve that I told you about uh, with the heater loop. Okay, that's it for the high voltage common components on the 2021 Mustang Mach-E GT. Thank you to all of you for uh, being my fans. There are several of you that have written to me asking how come I haven't shot another video in quite a while and if I'm okay. And yes, I've been okay. It's just been, I've just been extremely busy. So thank you to all of you and have a good day.